things up with some politics. Yesterday we talked about a new poll that shows Joe Biden doing much worse than you might think. <laughs> now another poll today shows someone doing much better than you might think. So take a look at this, 2024 election. This is if RFK Jr. is in the mix, 33% Biden, 35% Trump, 24% Kennedy. He is the highest polling independent in decades and could potentially take millions of votes from either candidate. 22% in one poll, 24% in another. That is the kind of numbers we haven't seen since Ross Perot. RFK Jr. is an overwhelming source of misinformation and disinformation, a purveyor of vile conspiracy theories and fake science. He's linked chemicals in our water supply to gender dysphoria, antidepressants to school shootings, and insisted COVID vaccines were a tool to control people via microchips. That's right, Robert F. Kennedy is in a three-way race with Trump and Biden, which is definitely the worst three-way a Kennedy has ever been a part of. <laughs> If he gets 24% in the election, it would be the best showing for a third-party candidate since Teddy Roosevelt. And because RFK is anti-vax, it would be the best showing for polio since Franklin Roosevelt. <laughs> On one hand, uh, it could be historic. America could set the record for hiring the world's oldest Nepo baby. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, this guy is crazy. And he's not like Trump crazy, where it's obvious right away. I mean, as soon as you see Trump, you're like, oh yeah, this, I know this, this is a broken man, you know? <laughs> RFK is like so boring. You, you gotta be talking for 20 minutes before you realize he just said pesticides make people trans. <laughs> Wow, kill bugs and be your authentic self. Sign me up. <laughs> and I liked RFK Jr. back when he was the like clean water guy. Why couldn't we get that RFK? Getting this RFK is like getting a Giuliani post sideburn drip. <laughs> Bottom line, this is not good. You got one candidate who doesn't believe in vaccines and two others who were alive when they were invented. <laughs> because whoever is president is going to have to handle a lot of problems, beginning with an interspecies war on the high seas. We're back with another killer whale attack in the high seas. Orcas sank three boats off Spain earlier this year, and guess what? They are at it again. Orcas surrounded this Polish yacht sailing through the Strait of Gibraltar, ramming the vessel for 45 minutes until it sank. The crew is okay, and experts still aren't sure why the whales are being so aggressive. Oh, you aren't sure why the orcas are being aggressive? I don't know, maybe because we keep stuffing their blowholes with empty bottles of Mountain Dew Code Red? I don't know why we're surprised this is happening. They're literally called killer whales. Are we also surprised when a blue whale is blue or a sperm whale guzzles sperm? But give credit to the yacht owners. They put up a valiant defense against the orcas by yelling, do you know who my father is? <laughs> Still, it didn't work, and nobody knows what to do about this. All I know is, if orcas are going to keep destroying yachts, Jeff Bezos has a yacht. <laughs> tech world, two years ago, the office sharing startup WeWork began selling stock to the public, and if you had the foresight and courage to invest in it at the time, I have some terrible news for you. Now to the stunning downfall of a company that was once the most valuable startup in the U.S. This morning, office space rental company WeWork is hoping to rework its business, filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The company, once privately valued at $47 billion, announcing the move overnight after years of controversies and poor performance. Shares plummeting 98% since 2021, trading at just 83 cents yesterday. Holy shit. <laughs> WeWork went from a $47 billion company to bankruptcy. Somewhere out there, Elon Musk is going, ooh, challenge accepted. <laughs> you know what? Maybe this is an opportunity. America has a homelessness crisis, and WeWork has all of the empty building space. You see where I'm going with this, right? 
We need to give the WeWork guy another hundred billion dollars to solve homelessness. <laughs> For more on WeWork's collapse, let's go live out to their headquarters with Ronnie Chang. Ronnie? What a fall from grace for WeWork. Yes, yeah, Sarah, it's so shocking. Who could have predicted WeWork would fail with such a genius invention, an office building? <laughs> what a game changer. No one had ever thought of working in a building before. We were all just out in the rain, our laptops getting soaked. What can we learn from a collapse like this? Well, there's a lot of complicated financial technicalities involved, but uh, I'd say the main lesson here is don't invest in stupid shit. <laughs> Which I know is hard for America since most companies are stupid. I mean, remember that Theranos lady with the turtleneck? She got like a billion dollars for inventing a box full of broken glass and blood. <laughs> At least she had something, okay? The crypto people were like, hey, remember those coins Mario would collect? <laughs> well, for 50 grand, I can get you one without having to punch a turtle. <laughs> and everyone was like, sign me up. Yeah, but Ronnie, to be fair, bad ideas are sometimes how you get the good ideas. That's a terrible idea, Sarah, okay? <laughs> the fact is, this has been a disgraceful period for America. This is the land of innovation. America had Edison, he invented a light bulb. Henry Ford, who invented the assembly line. And Benjamin Franklin, who invented being bald while also having long hair. <laughs> all right, so what do we do with all the remaining properties that WeWork has left behind? Well, you're in luck, Sarah, because I have a business idea of my own. <laughs> Ask yourself, what do people in cities really need? Affordable housing. <laughs> Okay, relax, MSNBC, okay? It, <laughs> in practical terms, what people really need, above all else, is a comfortable place to shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> One where you don't have to pretend you're gonna buy a bear claw when you're done. I'm talking about a place where I can take a dump, where you can take a dump. <laughs> There's no liberal dumps or conservative dumps, just dumps of all colors and consistencies, where black girls and Asian boys can take a dump in peace without someone jiggling the handle every five minutes. Hey, we're in here. We're all in here. And to make it happen, all I need is $20 billion and a couple of Glade plugins. Because America doesn't need a place to work. We just need a place to do our business. All right? Thank you. Thank you. God bless America.